Dwight is the second character with the most amount of cosmetics available and the male with the most customization options out of all of them, with over a hundred cosmetics. Also, in a lot of his cosmetics, his glasses are crooked. Jake Park and Dwight are the only survivors who are able to ruin barefoot, as they are the only survivors that have skins with no shoes. Meg Thomas takes the record as the character with the most skins in the game, with a total of 107 individual pieces. The freestyle Claudette skin is a community skin that got into a big controversy as the artwork for the skin did not fit the character of Claudette, especially since the skin had a visible thong which, in the end result, got completely removed due to oversexualization. Nia is the only character in the game that has a cosmetic that references an actual perk in the game. The first one is her Svart Cat Torso, which has the same cat as the Spine Chill perk. The other cosmetic is the Sirius Vandal Vest Top, which has the Mass Jigs Graffiti Tag, which is her logo, and it's the same one that is used in the Streetwise perk. In both of his outfits, Bill has text on his cigarette that can only be seen if you check the texture in the files. For some reason, the brand of his cigarette is Kirchmer Original. No idea why the developers decided to add this extremely hidden detail. David King has various cosmetics where he has a rose pattern on them, or a rose on the cosmetics themselves. This rose also appears as a tattoo on David's neck. This rose symbol is the logo of the English national rugby team, and it is attention to detail, as David King used to play rugby before he was kicked due to violence. The Laurie Straw that we have in the game is based on her comic version in Halloween. However, the cosmetics are based on the original movie. One of Ace Visconti's cosmetics, Ace Vegas, has some money on the pants. Did you know that this money actually has Ace Visconti's face on it? You probably did if you watched another video of mine before this one. So if you end up enjoying this vid, I recommend you check out the other one too if you haven't watched it yet. Feng Bin's pyjama cosmetic has a very nice plushie as a backpack. Did you know that this plushie is the same one as the clown's Mr. Puddle skin? But Mr. Puddles was a community-made cosmetic, so this means that the Mr. Puddle skin was so influential and successful that Behavior decided to reference it into one of their original skins. This is a sad fact. Quentin Smith is the only survivor in the game that has no cosmetics beside his prestige and secondary cosmetics. There is no way to have an outfit as a Quentin main. For the people that say that Bill has the same issue, Bill got a complete outfit in a past rift. Detective Tap was the first licensed survivor to have a completely new cosmetic for sale in the store. For some odd reason, in Kate's first ever appearance, she is shown wearing a white sleep dress, which a person would assume is her default cosmetic. However, Kate used a black sleep dress for the rest of her appearances, both as a default cosmetic and as part of her official artwork. She is the only survivor in the game that has this, which means that it is possible during the creation of this animation, Kate was supposed to have a white sleep dress as her default cosmetic. Adam Francis is statistically the survivor with the least cosmetics to time being in the game ratio, as survivors like Jeff Johansson, Felix and Elodie, who were released way after him, already have more cosmetics than he has. This makes Adam one of the most forgettable survivors that are original to the game. One of Jeff Johansson's cosmetics could be a reference to a real-world metal album called Symbolic. As you can see in the design, both are quite similar. However, it could very well be a coincidence. Jane Romero is the only survivor in the game that has common outfits that cost more than the default price for them. There is no explanation why this is the case, and the cosmetics have no special attributes to them to deserve this increase in price. In fact, this hasn't happened again with no other survivor. Ash is the most unique survivor in terms of unlockable prestige cosmetics. When you prestige him first, you will get his entire torso and head covered in blood, whereas with any other survivor in the game, their head is the last piece you get covered in blood. This is because for Ash, they decided to make his hand a customizable part, and they had to unify the torso with the head. This only happens to some killers, like Hillbilly. Since the Stranger Things characters are now gone, and I cannot show you any cosmetics from them, what I can say is that Jonathan Byers is one of the various cosmetics in the entire game. Every single Yuikimura outfit has the pink Hachimaki that represents her band in them. Doesn't matter what outfit you select, it is present in all of them. 
and this also includes the Attack on Titan licensed cosmetics, as you can see it on her left arm, which is a really cool detail. Whenever you quickly select Zarina's different default cosmetics and bicolors, you will notice how her scarf moves in a very weird way similar to a snake. This is just a visual glitch that can also be done in-game by simply moving or rotating her in the store. Cheryl is the survivor with the most different character skins in the game with 3 legendary outfits and a 4th one if you count Alessa as a different survivor as well. This means that everyone in the lobby could be playing as the Cheryl character without being the real one, but instead a different character. She is also the only survivor currently in the game that has a legendary skin that is a completely different gender. One of Felix cosmetics the open shirt torso from the elegant pyjama cosmetic had a visual glitch that allowed you to see a little bit more further down, which revealed a crucial bit of information about Felix. He shaves. And this would be an amazing transition to a manscape that, but they are not sponsored by them. However, this was quickly hotfixed. We cannot have pubes in our Christian video game. There was a glitch with one of Elodie's rift cosmetics that made charms pierce through her skin, this was also quickly hotfixed. Yunjin's default cosmetic bicolors all reference real-world places in Gangnam Gu on South Korea. Originally, both of the very rare outfits for Leon and Jill were not sets. This meant you could combine them however you wanted, like a prestige head for Leon or not buying the exact same head cosmetic for Jill. This was quickly hotfixed into making the cosmetic sets which was something that disappointed a majority of Resident Evil fashion fans. One of Michaela's cosmetics directly confirms that she is a Wiccan, which basically confirms she is addicted to TikTok. While this is not a hidden detail at all, I still wanted to talk about this amazing effect that Behavior made of coloring the pocket green so it looks like the phone is still on inside the pocket of the workaholic pyjama torso. Yoichi is the only licensed character in the game where his skins are completely made by behavior. Yoichi was never seen as an adult in any of Ringu's films, which basically makes Yellow Raincoat the first ever depiction of an adult Yoichi. Hadis and common recolors are an absolute scam, never buy them please. In the default Trapper cosmetic, you can see that his left leg has bandages due to the injuries he might have sustained after stepping on his own bear traps. In the blighted outfits, any previous wounds are exaggerated, and thus in Trapper's blighted cosmetic, King of the Hooks, you can see that this wound is bleeding, which means under the clothing, Trapper's leg is heavily injured. One of Ray's cosmetics, Shadow Walker, is actually a cosmetic that was an early concept art of Wraith itself. In that same concept art, there are two other outfits that have not been released yet. Hillbilly is the only character in the game that has an uncommon weapon, the shovels, that have a complete model change and are also not part of any outfit. I wish Behavior gave uncommon weapons to all killers too. The Kampu trainee outfit has an interesting detail that I didn't think the devs would do. Instead of making the acupuncture needles a part of the outfit, they actually model the fuel needles, which makes it so that if you glitch your camera inside her head, you can see how deep the needles actually go inside her head. That's gotta hurt. One of the hunter's weapons has some marks on the blade of the axe. These markings are actually entity speak, and to this day, nobody knows what they mean. Instead of going the lazy way and having a samey description for the prestige pieces, each of Michael Myers prestige cosmetics have a completely different description from the default. You probably didn't notice this, but Hag has a cosmetic outfit that is not featured as an outfit in the in-game store and instead you have to buy the pieces separately. This is because those pieces were given in separate rifts and they are not coded to be a part of an outfit. However, if you combine them, these should give you the Mood Medusa outfit just recolored in green. The Doctor has one very rare weapon that is not a part of any other outfit and you might never know it is even in-game. This is just the same weapon from the Wild Asylum outfit, just with the spikes removed. The base model of the Pretty Woman skin and the rest of Booba outfits is different, which is very noticeable when you compare the build of both of them side by side and by the different positioning of the weapon in Booba's shoulder. Also, if you change the outfits, you will notice how their animation cycle resets. While this is not shown in the icon for the weapon, 
The left hand of Freddy is also a part of it, which is why when you select the prestige weapon for Freddy, the other hand also gets bloodied. Pig was the first character ever to add a custom sound effect for the weapons. In fact, the pig was the first licensed killer to receive new cosmetics on the store. Spirit is the only character in the game where each of her uncommon cosmetics have a different lore description, a different theme each, and more noticeable, the only uncommons that have some depth and interesting qualities to them. The Legion have three different torso cosmetics that are not part of any outfit and instead come as standalone pieces. These are the cat girl Susie skin and both Christmas sweaters for Susie and Joey. They are the only girlers in the game with Christmas sweaters too. In some of Plague's skins, she goes full commando. And yes, you can see this in-game if you position your camera well, but don't expect to see too much. Ghostface is the only character in the game that has a cosmetic piece which costs less than the price it is supposed to, due to how similar the classic Ghostface is compared to the default one, Behavior decided to discount the price to 200 Auric Cells. This makes classic Ghostface the cheapest, very rare cosmetic in the game, and it still costs $10. I wish cosmetics cost less. The chained Demogorgon skin is based on the events of Stranger Things itself, but the rest of the Demogorgon outfits, the Geo Mutation one and the Twisted Demogorgon, are both creations of the fog. This means that Demogorgon would have gotten a blighted cosmetic if it had stayed long enough in Dead by Daylight, and even possibly a nice cosmetic like Artist, Blight and Ghostface did. The Cursed Fate cosmetic is one of the most curious cosmetics for me, because it should have been a made a set instead. This is because the honest cosmetic worked in a different way compared to what you might expect. His head is also a part of the torso skin, and the top part is only the mask. This means that in order to create the Cursed Fate Oni head, Behavior simply made a fake head for Oni to wear. This means that anytime you use this cosmetic, there are two Oni heads inside the mask, which might be possible to see if you glitch the camera inside. The double-crossed outfit for Deathslinger is a reference to an old Wild West movie called Tombstone. In fact, that's the name of the outfit's collection. One cool overlooked detail from the blighted outfit of Pyramid Head is how it looks like he also suffers from the tormented status effect that he inflicts survivors with his trails, as you can see the same razor wires around his body. In the two blights outfit back, you can see a gross amount of what looks like to be meat and weird spikes. This is actually a visceral canker, an interactable object from Halloween events that you can actually spawn in the map if you select a rift challenge called Bountiful Harvest in the Tome 5 Unleashed Compendium. If you haven't done it yet, maybe try it after you're finishing watching this vid. Twins is so boring, I have no fun fact about them, so how about I take this time to remind you to give a like to this vid if you enjoy it. Alright, I was joking, Twin Mains, no need to leave hateful comments. One of the charms in the Twins Rift shows a child's coffin, which is the same one that is featured in the Eternal Sorrow outfit. In fact, this outfit is really cool because it also showcases a book which might be the Witch Hunter's book, but I cannot confirm this. Trickster has one cosmetic piece that directly references Yunjin Lee, which are the haircuts from the live show collection. No idea if it's a coincidence, but Yunjin's neon bob haircut features the same colors as Trickster's two outfits. A lot of people think that Nemesis wears trash bags as his outfit, but in reality, the clothing he wears is more of a carbon fiber protective gear that limits Nemesis mutations, which explains why in the games, Nemesis would mutate more and more over the course of the game the more damage he took. If you look at the small yellow stickers in his outfit, they all read Caution, and funnily enough, in his blighted outfit, all of these Caution stickers disappear because Nemesis already started to mutate and it's way too late to regress this. You probably didn't know this, but Pinhead has fully modeled pants inside his dress that are practically impossible to see in-game. These pants also have blood in them when you prestige, so this amount of detail put onto it is a lot considering probably everyone watching this vid have never seen Pinhead's pants. No fun fact about Artist, I just want to complain about her weapons as they all look the same and it's no cool. I wish they changed the color of the ink at the very least. Imagine the prestige weapon being a deep red color to symbolize red ink, or the ice one being a very dark blue. The weapons are all samey 
and honestly they don't deserve the price due to the fact that other cosmetics require texture and model changes. In fact, the weapons are not even animated or fluid, they are static, which could be something amazing if they decided to make the weapons be more liquid. End of my artist rant. Onryo has nothing under her dress, but this was not always the case. According to a person I know, in the PTV Sadako had a fully visible torso model under the dress, which they ended up making visible in the live game. However, in the game files, this torso exists and there is even a prestige texture for it. Did you know that all very rare dredge cosmetics have different sound effects? Take a listen. In the future, we will get a snowman dredge outfit, and I am sure that one will also have costume sound effects too. I left the best ever fact for last. Go to the store right now and check the Santa cosmetic for Clown. Check out his groin. Congratulations, I made you look at Clown's unshaven white pubes. And hey, if you're still watching this vid, it most likely means you enjoyed it. So make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.